I, I think all of us want to make sure that everything we've fought for and those who have sacrificed in Iraq, that what we've done there doesn't become undermined. And my husband's an Iraq War veteran. This is very, very important. And I think all of us share that. We'd like to bring our troops home, but there are serious questions remain remaining on whether the Iraqis will be able to maintain their own security. And, and I think that's what we're trying to get at. I wanted to ask you, Secretary Panetta, um, in an October 21st conference call, when the withdrawal was initially announced by the administration that my staff participated in, Dennis McDonough, the Deputy National Security Advisor, and Tony Blinken, the National Security Advisor to the Vice President, were both asked whether if now the Iraqis change their position and we receive the immunity that our troops need, whether we would change our position on maintaining troops in Iraq. And the answer we got on that call was no. So my question to you is, is that accurate? If today the Iraqis changed their position and gave us the immunity that we're asking for, would we keep troops there? Well, you know, obviously uh, both Prime Minister Maliki uh, and the President uh, are moving forward with the implementation of the security agreement. But uh, as I've said here, uh, we, we're prepared to uh, continue to negotiate with the Iraqis. We're prepared to uh, try to meet whatever needs they have. And if those needs uh, require a SOFA agreement in order to uh, ensure that our troops are protected, then obviously we would be prepared to work with that as well. So just to be clear, when Dennis McDonough and Tony Blinken said, even if we had immunity now, we would draw, we, we would withdraw altogether anyway, were they right or they wrong in terms of that being the administration's position? I think, I think they were reflecting uh, you know, the decision at that point uh, that was clear from, uh, from the Iraqis and from the prime minister that they wanted to proceed with the implementation of the security agreement. And uh, I think uh, the, you know, the decision was, even with the, the Iraqis, let's, let's proceed, implement that, and then perhaps beyond that, we will we'll negotiate a further presence. But it would certainly be a lot easier to, rather than take all the troops out and bring them back, than if we could work this out now, you'd agree, agree with me there. Yeah, no, look, I, I mean, I, we, we'd been working this for a long time. Uh, and I think it just, it came down to the fact that it was very clear from the prime minister and even the, le the, the other leadership that, you know, as, as Senator McCain said, uh, other members of the, of the leadership there, uh, you know, were interested in trying to pursue this. But when it was clear that they could not get immunity passed by the parliament, that that brought that issue to an end. Well, the reason that I raise it is I was concerned when it was reported back to me that the answer from the administration was that even if immunity was granted tomorrow, that we would still withdraw altogether. That made me concerned, and that's why I raised it. Um, I wanted to ask you about the uh, wartime uh, recent findings of the Wartime Commission on Contracting uh, found that uh, we've, bet from waste, fraud, corruption, and money going into the hands of our enemies, we've lost between $31 billion and $60 billion of taxpayer dollars that were obviously wasted, and the worst part is some of it went to our enemies. Uh, before the Armed Service Readiness Committee recently, we had a hearing on the Wartime uh, Contracting Commission report, and Dep Deputy Secretary Frank Kendall uh, testified before that committee, and I actually asked him about what was happening in Iraq uh, with respect to this, you stated today, roughly 16,000 contractors that will be left there many of them performing security functions with our troops with Daring by the end of the year. And when I asked him about that, you know, what's, how, will this, how will the Department uh, Secretary, the State Department handle that, um, he told me that there's a lot of risk in this transition and that the State Department has never done anything this big. Would you agree with me on that, Mr. Secretary? That's right. 
also that day before the committee, we had the actual commissioners that did the analysis in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, of the fraud, waste, and abuse, and money that went to our enemies. And Mr. Zakheim, who testified before our committee that day, I also asked him about what's happening in Iraq and what the implications would be for the State Department putting 16,000 contractors there, many of them asked to handle security. And what he said to me really made me very concerned. He said, I do have tremendous concerns. I have more concerns, unfortunately, than I have answers. Clearly, if the State Department until now has had trouble managing its contracts, and it's no question that they've had some, I don't know how they're going to manage all this. And he went on to say, now clearly, if you've got a whole bunch of contractors there with guns who will be doing all sorts of things, to me, to my simple mind, this is something that involves security that is inherently governmental. It is high-risk projects so that you are going to have a bunch of contractors either being shot at or shooting Iraqis. And this is a disaster waiting to happen, is how he described it to me. Can you assure this committee that, I guess I would ask you first, essentially my concern is that we're putting a civilian army there of contractors at an unprecedented level when we've already had some significant issues with contracting. We are going to ask these contractors to protect our diplomatic security uh, personnel that are there. Um, our civilian personnel who will still be serving in Iraq. Will they be secure? Will these contractors be able to perform the function that they're needed to perform? Can you assure this committee that, that the State Department will be able to perform this unprecedented task? Well, look, the, the, look there's, there's no question that there are, are risks involved here. Uh, the, what, we're, right. what we're facing is an issue of uh, a continuing and important State Department role uh, that relates to economic issues, that relates to development issues, that relates to education issues, that relates to the other pieces that uh, we have been assisting the Iraqis with. And the State Department is taking the lead in trying to build those relationships. So they've got a presence, they've got bases throughout Iraq where or, uh, locations where State Department uh, officials will be. Uh, in the absence of not having uh, the military presence, then obviously in order for them to do their job, they've got to have security, they've got to have support, they've got to have food, they've got to have transportation. And that's obviously brought about through a contracting uh, approach. Uh, are there going to be risks associated with the, the contractors? Yes. I think that is the case. Do we have any other alternatives? No. Senator, could I uh, comment on that question? Do we have time? If it's okay. In response to the question, sure. Okay. Thank you, John. Um, this isn't entirely new. I mean, even from the very beginning, when it was the Coalition Provisional Authority and then it became the U.S. mission in Iraq, the State Department has always contracted for personal security. Um, and so they, it's not as though they have no experience in doing that. But this is orders of magnitude, and I think that's what people are reacting to. But in order to help mitigate that, we've had a committee, a joint committee, Department of State, DOD joint staff, in place since August of 10, to talk about transitioning activities in Iraq, 437 activities. We've transitioned 387 of them. We'd be happy to brief you on that. We are going to retain the contract management. So the Department of Defense will maintain, through the uh, Directing Contracting Management Authority, we will maintain oversight or control of the contracts because we have the expertise. The contracting officer representatives will be Department of State personnel on the ground. So we, we have recognized it and we are working to mitigate it. Uh, thank, thank you, General Dempsey. Thank you, Secretary, Secretary Panetta. I would just add this, though. Back in August of 2010, we were all talking about having some military support there. And when I hear from the Wartime Commission on Contracting Commissioner that this is a disaster, I have real concerns about this in terms of protecting our personnel and also a waste of taxpayer dollars. 